Hi, Timothy Unger here. Welcome to my channel. Recently, I took an Indeed skills assessment on SEO and I scored expert. Now, this kind of came as a surprise in a way uh, because I do more coding and math at this channel. But I guess throughout the last few years, I picked up some SEO tips and I thought maybe that would be interesting. So if you think that is something you want to see, then watch this video. Okay, so one of the things that I thought about when making this video is I'd like to write an article on it on my 90 style site. So, um, and, and I'll leave a link to that in the description. It's worth spending at least two minutes to read it. Okay, um, but let's go through the, the main talking points. So uh, outside of this world-class navigation where you just, uh, you know, want to go back to the home page, hit the back button. Um, let's talk about some things that I've learned in SEO. So one of the things that I've learned is that uh, the <coughs> uh, Meta's keywords tag is pretty useless, and it's kind of discouraged at this point. Google, uh, it used to be a time where people would stuff keywords. Uh, don't do that anymore. Um, People would use like uh, you know on a white page they'd uh, hide keywords with uh, text color white. That's a no no. Okay, um, but there's one thing I came up with which is the DS technique, which is do something. Uh, you know I've talked to people where they're like oh well we want to keep uh, the you know the uh, voice of our blog the same so we want to get it approved and and they write like a 300 post a 300 word blog once a month that's that's never going to rank so don't do that okay so you got to do something you got to basically write a 1500 word uh blog probably daily okay um you know so i, I got this uh, article from captain words uh it, which is a website um, which was the first one that came up when I searched for post around 1500 words rank best when I, I searched that preconceived notion that I had. And, um, but instead, if I, if I just do uh, which post link is best for blogs, the blog tyrant came up. Uh, but this one said, yeah, post around 1500 words rank best. Obviously I searched for it, but, uh, this blog tyrant, um, uh, you know, so uh, this is a, a non-paid ad. And so I'm talking about the first one that comes up, a non-paid ad. Uh, and the article goes to talk about another study from this other website um, that the ideal blog length is around 1,600 words. So from this other website, Buffer.com, there's another one that came right up in the search. Uh, it's called Brainwork. Uh, it states that blogs around 200 to 400 words are not adequate for SEO. So if you have a 300 word uh, blog that you do once a month, it's not adequate for SEO. Instead, the it, this article states that uh, blog posts of 1,500 to 2,000 words are, quote, Google go-getters, okay? Um, which, yeah, I, I would agree with, all right? Uh, then I go down here. Um, there's another one from blog.hubspot.com, which actually ranked, uh, even though this is a subdomain, um, it ranked on the first page. It says uh, the new study is showing uh, 2,100 to 2,400 words. Wow, that's a lot. So you want to write a lot of words. You obviously want to have good content for your blog post. So content is king, right? Content is king. Um, if you write good content and a lot of content, you're going to... Um, you know, get a basically uh, a better SEO uh, search engine optimization for that. All right. Um, so there's stuff about where do you put your meta tags? You obviously put those in the head of your document when you're dealing with HTML or um, HTML that's generated from PHP. Um, you do want to have your meta tags in the uh, head of the document, all right? And your Google Analytics tag goes in the head of the document. That's that's uh, some basic stuff, but you may not know that. Um, and then we'll talk about uh, headings and subheadings. Um, the ones available in HTML from, range from H1 to H6. Most people 
Don't go beyond H3, maybe H4 sometimes. Uh, but basically your H1 is your, uh, should have about the same as maybe your title. And then your H2 is like the first subtopic. You have a couple H2s and within the H2s, you have a couple H3s. They're subtopics of the subtopic. You go that far. Uh, the title, you want to have your main topic. The title tag goes within the head of the document. Okay, so that's, um, you also want to have your description. This should be uh, something descriptive about your page that's less than 160 words. That's what you get when you go to, um, when you go to Google and you see that little description, that's from this meta tag, which is named description. SSL, I see this even in some web development companies. Uh, they don't have their SSL configured correctly. Um, that's a big no-no for SEO. You don't want to come to your page and see something uh, without this lock here. Um, <clears throat> and a lot, a lot of the hosting companies now like HostGator, um, they basically give you like free SSLs, which are fine if you're not doing e-commerce. If you're doing e-commerce, you need something a bit more protective um, because you're exchanging credit card data, so on and so forth. Uh, the SSL is a secure socket layer, so it protects data transferring to the website. Um, paragraph length. Uh, one thing, actually, even though you want your blog post to be longer, you may want your paragraph length to be slightly shorter than a typical article. And you think about it because of the way the paragraph wraps on the phone. So in a typical book or something like that that you're reading, paragraphs might be a little bit more words because they have a longer uh, page to go across. When you're on a small phone, you're wrapping a lot. We know that, you know, uh, getting your article to read well on mobile is important. So you may want to actually do shorter paragraphs. Okay. Um, and then I see here, you want, you don't want paragraph being linked to being too long. If people just saying, ah, I don't have time to read this and just bouncing off your page. Um, so for instance, my average engagement time is a lot more than 10 seconds. It's, it's around a minute 40 for this 90 style site. Um, you know, if you, read the article for at least two minutes anyways uh so um shorter paragraphs makes the content easier to read uh like i said um talking about mobile devices um a meta tag that you definitely want to have and i do have it even though this site is styled as a 90s style site it has this meta tag which the name is viewport so you can read this site on a mobile phone um and you want the content of that to be width equals device dash width initial scale equals 1.0 that will help it to resize it to different size screens so uh, the text on the mobile will still look readable okay you definitely want that um, if, if you didn't have that tag and you went to a traditional 90 style website it would look really bad on the phone you'd have to like span it out and do all this stuff okay um Another SEO tag, I don't use this one as much as the canonical tag. Um, but that basically, uh, again, all these uh, meta tags are in the head of the document, but that helps to tell Google which page to look at. So if you're using a content management system, say WordPress or Drupal or Joomla, uh, it may create multiple pages for categories. You want to tell uh, Google to pay attention to just one page not the other pages, because duplicate content is bad, all right, for SEO. Uh, for this site, I forced the SSL through the hypertext access file. And so it's basically forcing you to go to the SSL version of the page. Um, that's my theory. Maybe I should use canonical tags. If you think I should, leave a comment in the comments below. Um, Okay, so that's all the SEO stuff. Now there's some other stuff um, that we want to talk about. Uh, so let's talk about some other tricks. So, so one of the tricks that I came up with was posting something bold about staying on the page for two minutes, uh, especially if your average engagement time is a minute and 40 seconds, because that will increase your average engagement time. Uh, 
Okay, the next thing I came up with was posting something on Facebook about taking some Indeed skills assessment where you get an expert in SEO, then the same day writing an article in SEO, then tagging your friends in that post. <clears throat> okay. Um, and then the next one I came up with was to go to your YouTube channel and read the post you just wrote about, then link it in the description of the video you post. That way, if people watch the video, they will then see your post and may go review it after the video or at a later time. And you also want to make sure to embed the video in your post so they'll read it, then watch the video again, then read it again, then watch the video again. And Okay. Um, make stuff up about wanting a coding community when all you want to do is drive people to your YouTube and 90 style blog. By the way, have you guys liked, subscribed, and hit the bell for notifications? I'm really looking to build a coding community where we can get together and work on code and share our thoughts. Okay. Another one I want to do is, uh, or you want to do is talk about traffic you get on your blog. Talking about traffic drives more traffic. By the way, have you guys seen the video, side note, um, about the traffic that I've gotten one month in on this 90 style blog? It's actually pretty good. Uh, you should check that out. Um, talk about how much money you're earning on the internet, even if it's not a lot. People are always interested in that. Uh, talking about how much money you have, you make drives traffic, which in turn increases the amount of money you make on the internet, which drives traffic, which then increases the amount of money you making, you're making on the internet. Internet into a cycle, okay? Um, so you also want to make a good conclusion for your blog. You just don't want to stop typing after you've gotten 700 plus words. And uh, yeah, that's the end of this video.